Please welcome USA Triathlon's most decorated triathlete in history, Hunter Kemper. It's getting late, it's, it's getting late. Uh, I got the same email about my time slot. Tim Yount sent me three to five minutes. Mike Riley got 10, I don't know what's going on. I think Tim has heard me speak before. Um, Barry, thank you so much for your, that wonderful introduction uh, and your leadership of the United States Triathlon Board. It's been unparalleled and uh, your leadership has been amazing. So thank you very much, Barry. I also. I also want to know if the board is racing this weekend. Are, are any of the board members racing this weekend? Is there, is there like a little rocky? Okay, yes, yes, we got some board members racing. Uh, Barry is also racing, is that right, Barry? No, he's not racing. Okay, because if you were, my money was on you. This man is really, really fit. To the Hall of Fame committee, thank you. I'm honored and humbled by the recognition. To the other inductees, Mike, voice of Iron Man Riley, it's awesome to be inducted with you, Donna, six-time world champion, Smyers, it's amazing to be inducted with you as well. And Jim Superman Ward, I wanna be Jim Ward when I get older. In my very first triathlon, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't realize the importance of fast transitions, and I didn't know that the clock doesn't stop between the bike in and bike out banners. I was unaware that the, the lighter the bike, the faster your bike split. I didn't realize that shaving your legs was considered performance enhancing. I was just an Orlando kid who was three decades ahead of the hashtag time to try movement that is sweeping the nation right now. I competed in my first triathlon 32 years ago at the age of 10 in Claremont, Florida, a town north of Orlando. I was invited to one of Fred Summers' Kids Try Series events by two swimming friends of mine. After swimming 100 meters, biking three miles, running a half mile, in 17 minutes, I won my very first race. I finished on the top step of the podium that day and I beat two other 10-year-olds. That's right, we were all on the podium. <laughs> it was at that moment that my talent in triathlon was overwhelming and clearly visible. I then went on to compete at the 1986 Iron Kids National Championships at Busch Gardens in Tampa, Florida. It was my second triathlon ever, and I ended up finishing in first place, beating nine other 10-year-olds that day. I know. <laughs> so, the way, so the way I looked at it, I was getting better. I also quickly realized that I was finding success in a sport that no one else was doing. I can vividly remember the slogan being announced before the first Iron Kids National Championships, Rainbow Iron Kids where every finisher is a winner. Wait, what did he just say? I thought to myself, every finisher is a winner? I don't think so. I mean, this is the national championships, people. Every finisher is not a winner. The only winner that's gonna be happening today is this guy. My dream as a kid was to be an Olympian, although there was a problem. My sport was not in the Olympic Games. That all changed my freshman year at Wake Forest University, the spring of 1995, when the IOC announced that triathlon would become an Olympic sport. In 2000, at the Sydney Olympic Games. I've raced with and learned from so many of the legends of our sport. Simon, all I do is win, 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 Lessing. Chris Macca McCormack. Craig Crowey Alexander. Greg Moneybags Bennett. Simon Olympic medal hog Whitfield. Jan Fredissimo Fredino, Alistair Golden Boy Brownlee, and Johnny Little Brother to Alistair Brownlee, Javier Nothing I Can't Do Gomez, and fellow Americans and teammates Annie Potts, Tim O'Donnell, Matt Reed, and so many more. I'm grateful for how much these athletes have pushed me to train harder and be better every single day. Triathlon has afforded me the ability to travel the world. I filmed a commercial in the heart of Sydney, Australia, and at the same time lost, to a lost a race to a kangaroo named Skippy. 
I swam with sharks in the harbor during the Sydney Olympic Games. I've celebrated a victory on the Great Wall of China. I've embraced the cold temps in Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, and right out here in Lake Erie. I've successfully escaped from Alcatraz twice and won. I've biked, thousands, I've biked with thousands on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago. I've swam in the Hudson River willingly. I've had five surgeries on my left elbow and an IV pick line put in my opposite arm to clean out my staph infection just a few months before the London Olympic trials. I've raced through Central Park in a Speedo and proposed to my wife, not wearing a Speedo, in that same famous park in, later that day. I've won the largest prize purse in our sports history in a Toyota RAV4 at the Lifetime Fitness Battle of the Sexes Triathlon. I bought my first house in Colorado Springs and found out my wife Val and I were expecting our first child all within, this, within a summer. I've been drug tested so much that when my son Hudson was four, he would answer the door and say, Daddy, your friend is here. <laughs> I lost to Javier Gomez at the High V Triathlon by only eight seconds and had confetti rain down on me, all while realizing I had just lost out on $80,000. Or as my wife said at the finish line, do you realize you just lost out on $10,000 a second? Thanks for the much needed and timely perspective, babe. <laughs> I've graced the cover of a Wheaties box with Peyton Manning and had General Mills tell me that I was being selected to be on a new Wheaties cereal box called Wheaties Fuel as the everyday guy, not to actually sell the product. That was Peyton's job. <laughs> Wait, what? W what do you mean the everyday guy? You know, people relate to you because you swim, bike, and run for a living. Uh, yeah, like I run a four minute mile and I do a 10K, my 10K after I swim by could run in 30 minutes. People, that's not relatable. You know what I'm saying? You're not just the everyday guy, you're just someone that's relatable. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, I shave my legs for a living. That doesn't seem so relatable to me. I've won and I've lost and it's been all part of my sweet journey in the sport of triathlon that I love. I am grateful. To all the age group triathletes in the room here tonight, all the age group triathletes in the room here tonight, would you raise your hand right now? Maybe not me, but thank you. Thank you. A lot of hands going up. Thank you so much. I know many of you have had the same race experience I just described. Why? Because our sport is a sport where elites and amateurs alike can compete at the exact same distance on the exact same race courses around the world. The people in this room, the athletes in our sport are inclusive and welcoming. Our sport is a lifestyle sport for any age, gender, or race. We all believe in the empowering effects triathlon can give a person when they cross that finish line. Whether you hear, whether you hear your name being called out at the finish of an Ironman by Mike Riley, or whether it's, a, it's a time to try and you're doing your first race with some friends from work, our sport of triathlon is the most satisfying, humbling, welcoming, encouraging, trying, motivating, and amazing sport in the world. <laughs> to all the age groupers in this banquet hall and across the country, you are the face and backbone of USA Triathlon. Thank you for encouraging me cheering for me and giving me a high five on and off the race course throughout my career. To all the sponsors that have supported me throughout my career to get this stage tonight, to get to the stage tonight, thank you. I see you, Paul and Rudy Project. Thank you so much. My agent, Michael Spencer, was very forward thinking in his desire to pursue outside of the industry sponsors not associated with Swim, Bike, and Run. Companies like Polo Ralph Lauren, P&G, Atos Origin, General Mills, Toyota, Hy-V, and Human. Thank you to all my sponsors and to Michael Spencer for being the best at what you do in creating an environment for me to take care of my family. Thanks to the US Olympic Committee for their commitment over the years. You've credentialed me with access to the US Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs for the entire length of my 18 year professional career. I am grateful for sports nutrition, 
sports science, strength and conditioning, sports medicine, sports psychology, and use of the recovery room as it helped me reach number one in the world and extend my career. A special thank you to everyone at USA Triathlon. The financial support that was provided from my own federation allowed me to race at the highest level. Tim Yount, where's Tim? Okay, Tim doesn't need an, yep. T Tim has a name tag, but Tim doesn't actually need a name tag. Tim, we've traveled up to many Olympic Games together, and you've always been a source of encouragement to me. Tim, you are truly the heart and soul of USA Triathlon. Thank you. Rocky Harris, your natural leadership style, creative and outside the box thinking is great to see. Thank you for your commitment to high performance and your desire to see Team USA continue to reach the top step of the Olympic podium. I've had many coaches since I was little, all of them instructing and teaching me how to be better in swimming, cycling, running, and transitions. Thanks to my early coaches, Clay Parnell, Charlie Harris, and John Goodridge, as well as my professional triathlon coaches, George Dahlem, Mike Doan, and Cliff English. Thanks for always be believing in me and sharing your knowledge throughout this triathlon journey. It's hard to properly express or truly measure what a family like mine can mean. To my in-laws, Frank, Papa, and Verly Mimi, you have brought me into your family and treat me like your very own son. You put thousands of miles on multiple minivans. For the countless times you've come to Colorado Springs to watch our kids, allowing Val to be by my side at events around the world, thank you for always being there for our family. <laughs> to my sister Lee, my number one cheerleader, thank you for always making me feel that what I did racing around the world in speedos and spandex was important and that I was truly living out my God-giving talent every day. To my mom of the self-proclaimed mama's boy, you are a selfless giver who taught me, who taught me that acts of service happen daily. Those early morning swim practices, making me a quick meal in between workouts and encouraging me to continue my pursuit of excellence. I always knew and still do how much you believe in me. To my dad, or bud, you are my mentor and my best man. Your sense of humor and ability to win others over is contagious. When I graduated from Wake Forest University, I told my dad I was going to be a professional triathlete and try to make the 2000 Sydney Olympic team. His reply, how are you going to make that happen? I told him I was gonna move to Colorado Springs and train at the Olympic Training Center. His next question, does this mean you're still on my payroll? <laughs> no, Dad, they will let me eat at the training center and I plan to sell my car for some more cash. My dad replied, I believe I bought you that car and the title is still in my name. I responded, well, I can always live off my savings. My dad said, your savings? Based upon your last income statement, you'll be home in eight months. <laughs> Needless to say, I have never had to move home, but I may have overstayed my welcome during the holidays by a few months. Dad, you've always been there for me. I'll never forget the memories of you cheering, let's go bud, along the race course. My parents have traveled the world to support Support me and attended every one of my Olympic games. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for allowing me to chase my dreams. <laughs> to my five beautiful kids, Daddy loves you through and through, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, too. Toward the end of my racing career, people probably looked at me like I was crazy when I traveled to domestic races with three or even four kids in tow. But my kids brought me great joy and exactly what I needed for competition, and that was perspective. It never mattered to my kids if I won or lost. I've always been just daddy to them. To my 11-year-old son, Davis, to my eight-year-old boy, Hudson, 
to my six-year-old case man, to my princess Price, and to my little buddy Smith, who's four months old. You are the true joys of my life. Find your passion and dream big dreams. <laughs> to, my, to my wife, Val, you have been my biggest source of support over the last 18 years. You are my beautiful bride, and I'm so blessed that God placed you in my life. Val, you are more than mom to our five precious kids. You are more than a Mission State University two-time All-American Hall of Fame USA Volleyball player. You're my number one teammate. Throughout this journey, my wife Val has worn many hats, like those people in Colorado Springs know. My personal massage therapist, my Michelin star culinary executive chef, my administrative assistant and accountant, my certified online travel agent. You're my professional suitcase organizer. You are the executive household manager. You're the director of child development in our home. And you're my number one speechwriter. I love living with you, babe. The ups and downs, the victories and defeats. I'm so thankful that no matter where life takes us, I get to do this life with you, hand in hand. Finally tonight, I officially announce my retirement from professional triathlon. And thanks to the Hall of Fame Committee for giving me this platform to do so. Yes, it has taken me two whole years without racing to finally be able to say that I am officially done. Was it because I thought I might go back after my run for a fifth Olympics in Rio and try one more time in Tokyo 2020 at the age of 44? Uh, no. Did I think I might move up to the longer distance, give Iron Man a go, and have Mikey, Mike Riley announce, you are an Iron Man? It's never been my dream. So why two years then? To be completely honest, I've just had a hard time saying goodbye. This has been the, the most difficult transition I've ever had to make. Triathlon and the Olympic movement have been my passion for over 30 years. I've seen the world and lived out my dreams with those I love right by my side. I've been so blessed. However, this is not the end of my career, my professional career. It's just the beginning of something new and exciting. However, there is one thing I'm definitely sure of, and that is the Lord has got a hold of me. I'm right where I need to be, fully relying on God. In the Bible, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I will continue to follow God's lead in this next chapter of my life. Thanks again to USAT to the USAT Hall of Fame Committee for this tremendous honor. What a special night this has been. May God bless all of you this evening.